Another Lorcano 1K just finished wrapping up this weekend, and we finally have the top eight deck lists for those individuals at that tournament. This tournament was at Charlie's Collectible Show, and I do want to give credit where credit is due, and that is for MushuReport.com. So make sure you guys go to this website if you are interested in any more Lorcana news. Now, we do see that these top four actually split, so we had no clear winner, but let's go ahead and get right into it. Here we are with deck number one. This deck was piloted by Anthony Perez, and it is an Amber Sapphire deck. We do see four stitch, which is going to work very well with going into a shift for Stitch Rockstar. We have the four Symbol Protective Cubs, so we're playing a total of eight Bodyguard in this deck, uh, with Maximus having a 4-5. It's actually a pretty strong Bodyguard to get over, so whenever I do see this, it's kind of worrisome whenever I'm trying to challenge some characters in order to clear some characters out of the board. We do have the Gramatalas, which is going to be able to fuel your ink well. We have Fills here for support. Not the greatest card, but it is there. We have the Baby Maximus. Uh, now, ever since people have been playing Amber Steel and things of that nature, people have been utilizing the Big Maximus with Bodyguards, so we don't really see too many of the Baby Maximus. You really see the Baby Maximus in the Amber Amethyst starter deck, but after that, once you start to improve and get and upgrade your deck, you don't really see this card anymore, so it's very interesting to see this in the deck still. We do have the Mickey Mouse Detective, because this also fuels your inkwell, so you are using this deck in order to ramp. And then you're going to be using cards like Hades to bring that back to be able to continue ramping or using Rapunzel's to be able to uh, increase your draw power. So there's a, lot, there's a lot of synergy in this deck, and it is actually very cool. I, I feel like I actually want to play this. Um, but before I continue getting myself sidetracked, we do have the four Rapunzel's. Now this allows you to be able to heal any damage and draw some more cards. And... We have the Auroras here, so this is also going to be able to um, give your characters ward. So when your characters have ward, it's they basically become mini Cuscos, and that in itself is also very, very good. So your characters won't be able to be banished with dragon fires and other worries and things like that. We have the four Stitch Rock Stars because whenever you play the Stitches, the Simbas, Gamatalas, Phils, you are going to actually be able to draw cards by exerting those cards now remember you do have to exert those baby characters whenever you put them into play and that's with his adoring fans ability every time you put a level two or a two drop character in play or lower to use it to draw they have to exert which exposes them to a challenge during your opponent's next turn so keep that in mind we do have the robin hoods this is also basically another draw card because you're going to be able to draw if you have less cards in hand when this character gets put in play even before, we also have the Stitch Carefree Surfers, and if you have two other characters in play, you're going to be able to draw. So, lots of characters that give us draw power here. We have no draw power in the form of items or anything like that, or or songs. I mean, I guess Be Our Guest is kind of a draw, but that's that's a search, so it's not really a draw in my opinion. But, uh, you know, lots of drawing based off of character abilities. We do also have the Hades. This is going to be a uh, selection of choice, so basically kind of drag and fire, but you're going to also be using this to increase your opponent's ink well so use this carefully hades is a menace it's a very good card but do you want to give your opponent fuel by having an extra card in their ink well when you use this ability it's up to you we have the four br guests we're gonna be able to search a character and add it to our hand we have the let it go which is basically a hades ability but in the form of a song so you're just going to choose a character and put it face down your in the ink well and then that's it and then Lastly, we have the Eye of Fates. Eye of Fates has been getting a lot of play lately. It puts lots of pressure on your opponent by just giving a chosen character an extra lore to quest for during the turn. So that's going to be it for deck number one, and let's move on to deck number two. Here we see a Ruby Amethyst deck with the three Archimedes, three Olafs, some brooms. So the broom count is actually... Not too surprising here, but what is actually surprising to me is a higher Mickey Mouse count. So typically you see about two Mickey Mouse Wayward Sorcerer or less, and then they can play like three or four brooms. But it looks like this deck does make use of the broom and Mickey Mouse combos. So it's very interesting to see the Lafos to ready a character after they've been exerted. Maleficence for draw. Uh, we maximize the amount of Rafikis we can have in our deck because Rafiki is a fantastic card, and I love this. I love that they maximize this. However, the one thing that I don't think is great, actually, is the low number of Aladdins. Aladdin is a control card. I think that if you want to win first place with an Aladdin, 
deck, you have to be able to play, or not with an Aladdin deck, but with the Ruby Amethyst, you have to maximize the baby and big Aladdin. So only seeing two baby Aladdins and only three big Aladdins is very surprising to me. Uh, you're going to use these Aladdins to be able to uh, bring your opponent's lore count down, and then you're going to shift into the big Aladdin to be able to challenge any opposing character, and then you're going to gain two and your opponent will, your opponent will lose two. So I think that this should be maximized to four as well as a baby Aladdin being maximized to four. We have the Mickey Mouse to be able to use our broom combo, so everybody knows what that does. We have the Queens for draw, Maui. We maximize four Maui here because it's good. It's got Reckless and Rush. Obviously, Reckless portion is kind of sucky, but we do see that it has Rush, so you're going to be able to use it as a big buffy Rafiki uh, toward the mid to late game. You only see two Ursula. I don't hate this. I like two Ursula. Uh, it's a very good card, but the fact that she's only a two strength does not warrant increasing her any higher. She can quest for three, and when you put her in play, your opponent loses a lore, and that's very good. But I think that, again, Aladdin is just a better card. We do maximize four Spirit of Elsa's. I don't hate this, um, but you do have to make sure your games always get to the grind game. If you're not being able to bring your game to the grind game, these huge Elsa's are going to be useless and won't have any uh, power, essentially. We do have these big Maleficents. We maximize on these four now. I think that most Ruby Amethyst decks maximize on the four Maleficent uh, dragons because it is also inkable. So it doesn't matter if you can't put it down. You can always ink it rather than inking like an Aladdin or Maui or an Elsa. You know, you're, you're only going to get this in the late game. So ink it if you need to. Play it when you can. We also have the four dragon fires, just basically pick and vanish. Very good. Friends on the other side for draw power. We have the 4 Be Prepared, always maximizing this card because it is very good. And then lastly, we do see 8 items in this deck, which is kind of surprising to me. I feel like a lot of these Ruby Amethyst decks are maximizing on items and uh, putting too many items in their deck. And I think that may be where the downfall is for these decks. I think that it may be more beneficial actually to uh, play less items and simply increase the Aladdin count. In deck number three, we do see another Ruby Amethyst deck with a few minor changes. We do immediately see the four Mickey and four brooms. So this one actually maximized on the Mickey and broom combo, not just kind of maximized. It is actually maximized. We have the Gastons. We have only two Rafiki still. So we do see that a lot of decks are only running two Rafiki and some are only maximizing uh, in some cases. So it's really just a player's uh, opinion at that point. We do actually see a higher Aladdin count in this one. Still not maximized, but definitely better. So we're seeing the three small Aladdin and four big Aladdin. So you're playing the three because you can just play them, and then you can shift into the Aladdins, or you're just playing the extra big Aladdin because you can just play it downright without having to shift at all. We have the four queens, Maui's, you know, basically a lot of the same everything, uh, but the one major difference we see here from between this and the last deck is that we do see two Shield of Virtue, and no LeFo. So we are seeing no LeFo, and we're just playing this to ready a chosen character. Uh, so it's basically preference at that point, and we do actually see a, a smaller item count. The last deck we saw had eight item cards. This time we're only seeing five. Uh, I prefer smaller items, lower item count, but to each their own, and that's going to be it for deck number three. In deck number four, we see another Ruby Amethyst deck. So obviously Ruby Amethyst had a clear showing at this tournament. We do see the standard four Archimedes, the Brooms, and the Mickey Mouse here. So they're maximizing on that combo there. We see Sergeant Tibbs, which is a good start. We do see the Archimedes. So maybe this deck focuses on trying to get an early lead other than a late lead because we also see that this deck and the last deck actually only had two of the Spirit of Winter Elsas. Um, the Gastons, we do actually see a Jetsam in this deck, so we do have the evasive ability to be able to climb our lore on our own or be able to counter another evasive card in our opponent's play. Um, nothing to say here, but we are seeing less and less items as we go. So maybe uh, a low item count or high item count doesn't matter too much, but Again, I prefer lower item count, and here we can see that we only play two. Um, always maximize on the friend other, friends on the other side, though, and as well as to be prepared. But not much can be said about Ruby Amethyst. You know, I think that everybody knows what the essential skeleton is. Um, when I say skeleton, it's like the bare bones kit for uh, 
a ruby amethyst and then after maybe like the 50 cards or so you can change the next 10 however you please moving forward on to deck number five we see another ruby amethyst deck but we see quite a few changes in this one compared to the other ruby amethyst decks that were in top four so we do see a lower broom count and we actually see no wayward mickey which is very surprising so you won't be able to get any combos going with that so you're basically just using this as a 2-2 two -two, uh character but i think that in this case if you're going to be using a 2-2 two -two, you're going to want to go ahead and bring it down to a sergeant tibbs if you're not utilizing these brooms with a mickey mouse wayward sorcerer why not play the sergeant tibbs absolutely necessary because sergeant tibbs is also a 2-2 two -two and it's just a one drop like it's just a better card if you're not trying to use it for a combo uh, we do see two Gastons, and we also see actually the Baby Elsas. So if you can actually get two Baby Elsas in play and get, in, get their abilities to start comboing off on each other and complementing each other, it's very hard to actually work your way up around that and find your way in a winning position uh, as an opposing player. We have the four Malicious for draw. We actually maximize the Big Aladdin, Baby Aladdin here. So we're going to be able to control quite easily. We have two Zeus. So rather than playing Rafikis, we're playing Zeus here. So... Uh, one cost higher in quest for two and it has rush and challenger so rather than being a 3-3 permanent like Rafiki this is a 0-4 but with plus four challenger only during your turn so um, maybe I think Rafiki would probably be better just because it has no strength during your opponent's turn but who knows uh, moving forward we do also see the goofies with the vases that can quest for two uh, Maui's we maximize the Elsa's for late game control we do also have the big Mickeys. When you have this Brave Little Tailor in play and questing for four every turn, uh, it's, it's actually quite worrisome because it's also evasive, so it's actually very hard to get over this 5-5 five, five Mickey. We maximize the Maleficence. We also have the Befuddle, so we play the Befuddle to return early uh, questers back to the hand, such as Amber Steel for aggros. Um, we play the four Dragonfire, friends on the other side, and we see a higher item count for this one. We see one Shield of Virtue. Uh, so playing this in place of a Lafo, we see the two Magic Mirror. I think every other deck list we've seen only had one. And now we also see the two Ursula's Cauldron and Pocket Watch. So we're seeing a total of seven items here for this specific deck list in the top eight. Again, this is top eight. So now we're getting to the point to where with these decks, these did not split the top four share. So um, these are only top eight. Moving on to deck number six, we finally see a deck that is not Ruby Amethyst, so let's go get right into it. Now, this is the standard, typical Amber Steel that we've been seeing win tournaments lately. This deck did only get top eight, so it didn't even get to top four, but let's get right into it. So we see the four Lilos uh, that can quest for two. We see the Stitch Rock, the Stitch here, and that's going to complement the Stitch Rock Stars. Captain Hooks and Goons for the low power um, early start. Uh, when you don't have your Lilos, we have the Future King Simbas to draw the Baby Simbas, good combo to go in with your Lilos, to be able to have Bodyguard on top of that Lilo, so that way she's safe for, at least for a turn. We have the Eric, Prince Eric's here for the low drop uh, Challenger with three willpower, and then, again, this is like a Steel Song deck, so we do see the Aerials, and an Aerial is going to be able to search the top four for a song. If you see a song, you can add your hand, and then your next turn... She is singer five, so you can be able to sing any of your songs here for uh, free while you have this aerial in play. We do have the tiny tactician Tinkerbell to be able to shift into the giant fairy Tinkerbells. Uh, Stitch Rock Stars here to draw because we don't really have any draw effects, as in like just drawing one, but we do have a bunch of uh, two and lower cards. So we have the Lilo Stitch, Hooks, Goons, and Simbas, and Eric to be able to. Uh, draw if you exert them with adoring fans giant fa giant fairy tinkerbell is going to put damage across the entire board on your opponent's characters that are in play and then on top of that you're also going to be able to play or grab your swords in various ways so you're going to be able to do quite a bit of spread damage we do also have the smash here to do poke damage be our guest to search for those characters so in many cases you can you may search for your shifted characters to be able to go into them with the baby ones you may search for your Ariel to be able to put her in play and then further search your deck again for another song and things of that nature. So Be Our Guest is actually very good and I would not take this out of our deck. 
We do have a whole new world in order to reset because let's face it, Stitch Rockstar does not always work and we actually don't play a Rapunzel in this deck. So without Rapunzel, our draw effects are actually lower than we would think. So you're going to need to use this whole new world because Stitch Rockstar is not always going to resolve. So use this to reset and get a whole new seven cards in your hand. You do have Grab Your Sword for spread damage and we actually have Lantern. Lantern is actually a very good card. Uh, you just put it in play and then toward the mid-range type of decks uh, where you're going to be playing mid to late game, you're going to use this to be able to play uh, Stitch Rockstar for only 5 cost or play Tinkerbell for 5 cost and things of that nature. So there is the Amber Steel deck for top 8. Here we have another Amber Steel deck with few changes. We do see the Captain Hooks and Eric's and Ariel's Tinkerbell, but we do see a Hades. Hades is going to be very useful to bring back those Ariel's that are banished, to bring back those Tinkerbell's that are banished, to bring back the Stitch that is banished. You're gonna, there's many uses for Hades to bring them back to your hand in order to make plays your next turn. We do also see that we have four Rapunzel's here. Rapunzel is a very good card to heal some damage off of some of your characters and he, uh, be able to draw some cards. Now. I'm looking here and we actually don't see this, the baby stitches. We don't see any uh, Lilos. We don't see the bodyguard Simba. So this is definitely a mid-range deck. We're not trying to quest as quickly as possible in order to win in aggro style. So this is mid-range. We do also see the Hans here. Beast to be able to get rid of the items in play. We have the Cerberus. We, do, we have been seeing Cerberus get more play in these Amber Steel decks, specifically because it is a 5-6. You want to have that high strength and high willpower in order to get over these uh, opposing Tinkerbells, to get over those other characters such as Ursula and Elsa and things like that in those late games. We do see the Tinkerbells, so you can be able to go into the shifts here. And this is actually the only shift here. So Amber Steel, you typically see Stitch New Dog with a Stitch Rockstar, but we don't see that here. We do have the Stitch Carefree Surfer here. This is also a very good draw card. So we do see a bunch of cards here to be able to draw. You know, we're going to get into uh, the aerials to sing for songs and get part of your world uh, to return characters back to your hand, search your deck with uh, your Be Our Guest. You're going to be able to put some poke damage. So basically relying on Rapunzel and Stitch for draw and using your aerial to search for certain things to be able to do good things towards your opponent. Bad things for them, but good for you. Uh, we see the smashes here. Obviously, smash is just too good. And we've actually been seeing You Have Forgotten Me get lots of play lately. Uh, it's, gonna, it's an ability that states that each opponent chooses and discards two cards. So if you get a... Fr uh, it's not actually a song, but if you can actually get this into your hand and play it, and your opponent only has two cards, they're going to discard those two cards, and then they are at the mercy of their top deck, uh, which is very good for you and bad for your opponent. You never want to be at the mercy of your top deck. We do have Be Our Guest. You can be able to find those characters that you need in order to get those wins and secure it. We do have Part of Your World. Now, typically when I see Amber Steel, we see uh, only Hades or only Part of Your World, so it's very interesting that we see a Hades and Part of Your World being played in the same deck. Uh, basically, just have the same, but either have the same ability. Uh, when, when Hades gets in play, you can return a character from your discard pile to your hand. And this also does the same thing. We have Hakuna Matata. I'm not a fan of this card. I never want to have it in my deck. I do know that there are some cases in which it is useful, but I just don't really care to heal. If I need to heal, I'm going to rely on my Rapunzel to do so. But it is there, and it's going to be able to uh, remove up to three damage from each, uh, each of your characters. So each, so all your characters. Very good, but not the greatest card in my opinion. Then we're going to finish off with the four Grab Your Swords. And lastly, we are going to finish off the top eight with an Amethyst Sapphire deck. We don't see these too often, so we're going to see that we maximize the Brooms and Mickey Mouse Wayward Sorcerers. We have the Archimedes. This deck actually plays Yzma. We don't really see too many top tier uh, Amethyst decks playing Yzma, but I actually kind of like that. I love being able to see the top card of my deck and then deciding if I want to keep it or not. Uh, we have the two Rafikis and four Maleficents, the Mickey Mouse here to be able to ramp. Jafar, I'm not a fan of this Jafar. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure if I like Jafar on this deck, um, especially with this deck specifically. Uh, I feel like it's actually going to be kind of hard to keep cards in your hand with this deck. 
Uh, so I think that maybe having this Jafar where it gains one strength for each card in your hand is not the greatest of cards to have. Now we do have the queen that can draw, but that's at the mercy of exerting her. So you're going to have to exert her to draw. So I get that you can draw, but exerting it is a big risk in many cases. We do have this uninvited Maleficent that can quest for three. She's a three six. She can get bit pretty tough to get over. I'm not going to lie. Uh, we also have the Robin Hood, second quest for two, and it also draws if you have less cards in your hand. So maybe if you're running this, uh, that's actually kind of decent, not too bad. Uh, Scar here, uh, when you play this character, chosen opposing character gets minus five strength, which is very good. We do also move forward with the four Ursulas to be able to control in some sense, and she quests for three. Hades is just a menace, uh, returns a character to the inkwell or puts a character in the inkwell face down, friends on the other side to draw, um, let it go, same thing as Hades for the most part, and then we only play uh, one magic mirror and one cauldron. So maybe the deck's not too bad on draw power because we see Hades, uh, not correction, not Hades, uh, Robin Hood and the Queen and friends on the other side, but uh, overall it's okay. Um, it's kind of cool seeing an Amethyst Sapphire deck here though, but that's gonna be it for the top eight at Charlie's Collectible Show. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll continue making more content. See you guys in the next video.